Howdy ho, it's Andrew. Today I would like to teach you how to find all of the intercepts and the asymptotes of the rational function of 2x minus 3 divided by x plus 4, and we're also going to sketch a little bit of a graph. So first let's start with the intercepts. So let's take a look at the x-intercepts. So remember, x-intercepts on a graph are going to be where the function intersects the x-axis, right? So here, here, and just my picture and uh, would be there. Now, there's something unique about all those points is that the uh, x value uh, for those points changes, but the y value is the same. The y value for all of these points is zero. So basically what that means is that when you're finding the x-intercepts, what you're going to do is you're going to plug in the value of zero for your function. In other words, the y value, okay, is going to be zero. So I take a look at my function over here. Instead of writing p of x, we can just write y. So y is going to be equal to 2x minus 3, all divided now by x plus 4. And what I simply do is I plug in a value of 0 there for y, okay, 2x minus 3, all divided by then x plus 4. And then what I do is I simply solve this for x. That's what I want to find. I want to find the x-intercept. So if you notice when you cross multiply here, it just becomes 0 equals 2x minus 3, right? Now, basically the shortcut is you can kind of just take the numerator, set it equal to zero, all right, to find the x-intercepts, and then solve it for x. So you'd add three to both sides, so it'd be three is equal to two x, divide out two from both sides, and then x is gonna be equal to three over two, or 1.5. So your x-intercept now will have a coordinate of three halves, or 1.5 comma zero. That would be your x-intercept, okay? Now let's take a look at the uh, y-intercepts. So the y-intercepts now are going to happen when in, in the reverse order, okay, when x is zero. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take, right, if you were to think about a graph, right, where this function crosses that uh, y-axis now, it always crosses the y-axis when the x value is zero. So basically what you do is you take every x value in your function and you just set it equal to zero. So it's gonna be two z uh, times zero minus three all divided by uh, 0 plus 4. So your y-intercept, or the y-value of the coordinate is going to be negative 3 over 4. So negative 3 quarters. All right, and the coordinate then for the y-intercept, so let's just write that on the top here, because we don't really need the work. So the y-intercept is going to be uh, 0 comma negative 3 quarters. Okay, cool. So that's the y-intercept. So those are all the intercepts. They're only going to be x and y's. Okay, next we're going to focus on the asymptote. So we can do either one, it doesn't matter, vertical, horizontal, whatever the case is. Uh, why don't we look at the uh, vertical asymptote? Okay, vertical, I'll write it as VA, VA. Vertical asymptotes now are going to occur uh, when the denominator becomes or approximates zero. All right, now whenever you find a vertical asymptote, the most important thing is to make sure that your function, I'm just going to write it y equals 2x plus uh, minus 3, 2x minus 3, all then divided by x plus 4. Most important thing is that you have it in fully factored form, and you're going to cancel any terms that are in common. That's important. Now, this is already in fully factored form. So all I do then, after it's factored and anything's canceled, I'm going to set that denominator equal to 0, and I'm going to solve it for x. Okay, And this turns out to be, then, the actual equation of the vertical asymptote. Remember, all vertical lines will have a value of x being equal to some constant number, okay? So that's all that that part is, relatively straightforward. So that's the vertical asymptote. Now, the next thing is uh, whether it has a horizontal asymptote or it has a slant asymptote, all right? So what's going to happen, you know, you want to think about this step kind of um, together, okay? Whether it has a horizontal asymptote now or a slant asymptote, what you're going to do is you have to recognize whether your function is either top heavy, equally heavy, or bottom heavy. All right. If the function is top heavy, what I mean by that is if the power, if the highest power of x in the numerator, in this case it's a one, if it was greater than the highest power of x in the denominator, in which case this is one, which it isn't, right? This is one is not greater than one, then you'd be then you'd be looking for a slant asymptote. All right, and you'd have to do long division. Uh, if it's equally heavy, then you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. And if it's bottom heavy, you're also going to have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so in this particular case, the function is indeed 
equally heavy. There's an equal power, you know, the pow highest power of x in the numerator is 1, same as in the denominator, it's 1. So what you do to find an equally heavy horizontal asymptote, you're simply going to take the coefficient with that highest power of x, 2x, and you're going to divide it by the highest power of x with its coefficient, which is a 1 of the denominator, and just perform this indicated operation. And the value that's left over is going to be 2. Okay, now this is the constant value of the horizontal asymptote. In other words, y equals this ratio. That's going to be the horizontal asymptote. So in other words, y is going to be equal to 2. Okay, that's all you have to do for an equally heavy uh, function. Now, that takes care of all the horizontal slant asymptotes. That's it. There won't be any else. All right. So first thing I want to do is kind of just look at my asymptotes, negative 4 and positive 2, and kind of my x and y intercepts of 1 and a half and negative 3 halves. And I realize that I got something, I got something going on more on the left-hand side. So when I graph this thing, I'm going to put my axis more on the, uh, more on the, I guess my y-axis is going to be a little bit more on the right-hand side. All right, so I'll kind of create a little system like this or something. And uh, each, each of these will represent one value, negative and positive, okay? So first thing I'll do is uh, I'll, it doesn't really matter if you do the intercepts or the asymptotes, for, so first thing I'll do is the x-intercept. So it's going to be uh, 3 halves uh, 0, so that's going to be 1 and a half comma 0, so that's the x-intercept. And then this one's 0, negative 3, so it's about 3 quarters of the way down of a single box, so that those are the x and the y-intercepts. Next thing I do is I'll look at the vertical asymptote, and I'll just graph it, right? So negative 4, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4 in the negative direction. So there's going to be a vertical asymptote right here. Okay? Vertical asymptote right here. And I'll dash that just to kind of make it look, look nice. All right? So we've got this dashed uh, asymptote here, uh, vertical. And it also has a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 2. So I'm going to put a line right at y equals 2. I'll just dash it. Okay. Now I have to graph this thing, right? Just rough. So what I realize is that I know I have point. Now what's going to happen here is your graph is going to be basically in one, two of four places. Either the graph is going to be in this quadrant and this quadrant. Okay, if you're looking at it as I'm looking at it as if the asymptotes, the asymptotes will basically divide it into four quadrants. All right, possibly. Uh, so it'll either be in those two or it'll be in these two. All right. Now, uh, in this particular case, I know I have points here. The graph has to be here. And therefore, I know I'm going to be dealing with a uh, graph where the function is in that quadrant and in this quadrant. So basically, what's going to happen now, the graph has to cross these two points, okay? And it has to come close to this vertical asymptote, but never touch, okay? So I know, I know it's going to kind of look like this a little bit, right? And then I know this has to kind of trail off to that point as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be something, you know, in here-ish, something like that, roughly. All right, it's going to keep on going over here, and it's going to keep on going on over there. And basically in this quadrant, you're going to have something very similar, okay, where the, the function should be, you know, coming, approaching that uh, x um, or horizontal asymptote there, and then it should be going on up and approaching that vertical asymptote over there. All right, so this is kind of the rough sketch of what the graph would look like. Now, what you can do is you can use the calculator and actually graph it to really see what it looks like. So there's going to be 2x, open those parentheses, make sure this stuff is in the parentheses, and then divide it by x plus 4. All right, x plus 4, close them up, and then hit graph. And you can see that that's basically what I, what I had uh, graphed, right, what I had sketched. Okay, the only thing you don't see is the vertical and the horizontal asymptote, but notice the vertical asymptote is right at negative 4. Horizontal is going to be, it's tough to see in this picture, but it's going to be roughly around 2. Okay, and that's all there is to it, ladies and gentlemen. So I really do hope this helps. Um, if it did, help us out. Like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. And also check our channel out because we have thousands and thousands of solved problems out there to help you through your class. Right? Don't spend too much time studying your notes. You got you to gotta apply the notes. You got to do a ton of practice if you want to really do well. Okay, and we have a whole channel dedicated to that. We also offer private services as well, and we'd be happy to help you, all right? Also, take a look in the descriptions below. We have a lot of goodies over time that we're going to leave you down there, okay? Take care.